Welcome to the Success Journey Show. Let's travel together through the lives of individuals on the road to success. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Today is a very special day. We're on the eve of the Marine Corps' birthday. Uh, Simplify Dallas, and congratulations to all the Marines around the world. We made another birthday, and I want you guys to celebrate and be safe. This episode is going to be very, very, very special. Um, whatever you're doing, put it down and just lock in and listen because we got a special one for you on the Marine Corps birthday. Like you said, we come to our favorite segment of our show, and that's when we bring our guests on. Today is a very special show because uh, when you see this, it'll be the ninth, and everybody knows that the world stops on the 10th for the Marine Corps birthday. So uh, we have a very special guest on tonight, uh, Stuart DePaulo, and he is going to tell us a little bit about himself. But first, thank you for being on our show, Stu. Oh, it is it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. This is no, awesome. Uh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Why don't you go ahead and um, let our travelers, tell our travelers a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm 36 years old. I was born and raised in a little town uh, called Gray, Maine. That's mm -hmm. where I grew up for the first 18 years or 17 years of my life. And then I went off and joined the Marine Corps. And I've been active duty for the last 15 years. And then unfortunately, my 20 year goal to retire got cut short early because I got injured, mm -hmm. uh, injured enough to be medically retired. I wasn't able to fulfill my full 20 of active yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Man, so, so much to unpack in that so you said um from maine i've been up to maine i've been of course you know when we fly out to go to or come back in from iraq uh we fly into bangor yeah we fly into, yeah we fly into bangor maine and i've been up to maine up to the um i think it's portland maine portland yeah yeah yep. that's right been, on my hometown Yep, I've been up oh, that okay. way, so definitely, definitely know the know the area a little bit. Not that much to 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 to, to not have a GPS, but definitely know the area. But um, tell before you go further, Marlon, like I know you're gonna go yeah. somewhere else with it. Uh, explain Maine for us just a little bit, man, because I think it's the first time that we had someone from that region of the United States, uh, and many people see it on the map, and not many people, fewer people have gone there. Um, so tell us a little bit about like what Maine, what Maine is like, like it, it, in my mind, oh, it's always cold or, you know, I heard it's very beautiful, you know, different types of animals, buffaloes that are, are, uh, or mooses, I should say, like that are huge, you know, Just tell us a little bit about Maine for those that are listening. Yeah, yeah we do. We got the moose up there and mm -hmm. when they stand up next to your little sedan, I don't know if y'all drive like a honda civic or a car similar to that but they'll tout their bellies will be over the roof of the car Ooh, wow wow and, and they don't care who you are if they want to cross the road they're going to go across the road without stopping and then unfortunately sometimes people hit them and it's hard to try to avoid them even though they're so big and they can literally just step over your car Sometimes they can't move quick enough and we can't break quick enough and then we end up hitting them and it's just unfortunate and it just completely destroys your car. Mm, man, that's crazy. So they, they, this is just wild. They, this is like how deer are, you know, in my area, just randomly you can see one just walking right in the middle of the road. Are you in the Carolinas? I'm in actually the Maryland area. Maryland, yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. Yep, deer just yeah. like the deer are like that up there too. Wow, wow. And they have they have uh, what's the weather like in Maine? I know it's in the northern region of the the U USA. You know, what what kind of temperatures are you seeing during the summer and winter time? During the summer, well, it's typically about uh, sixty to eighty. Mm -hmm. and on average but this last summer just a few months ago my family was telling me that it was really warm it was like 90 to 100 mm -hmm. but it's not just the heat is what gets you it's the humidity, the humidity. That's up there mm -hmm. definitely, definitely 
And what about the winters? How cold does it get? Oh, it, it's gotten below zero when I in my childhood days. Mm, wow, wow. And tell one last thing. Tell us about when the snowstorm. And I, I, I really want to get hear this part because I'm in an area of Maryland now when there's little flurries on the ground. You know, they close down school. But when snow comes into Maine, you know, if it does, I, I don't know. You know, based off the location, I know some areas in in the north east don't get as much snow but areas of Maine that do get a lot of snow how much snow is like the average you know snowfall and then what's a bad snowfall the average is you're, you're looking at anywhere between six to nine inches yeah mm. the time there there have been cases where one storm has brought over a foot and a half mm. so it all it all depends on really like what is coming brought in with the storm how yeah. much how much precipitation that cloud picked up on the way over yeah yeah mm. wow and wow depending on how much it wants to dump on us yeah. mm. <laughs> <laughs> perfect sorry marlon man i just had to get a picture no of no no Maine real quick yeah yep definitely got a from. picture of me yeah, now yeah, you joined yeah. the marine corps is were there people in your family that said a um you had your father who what, what made you want to join the marine corps uh, honestly it was my recruiter <laughs> good old recruiter yeah, he, got <laughs> he got you right <laughs> yeah, i was as a young boy my grandfather both my grandfathers were in the army and i had every interest to join the army and when the recruiter found out I had interest in that, he was like, no, nah, you want to come this way. Mm. And, then, and, then he, and then he started talking to me about the Marine Corps and all the good things about it. And, I, and he was straight up and honest. And everything that I experienced, he hit the nail on the head. And it was everything he talked about, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Wow. So I, am, sure. I, I was thankful for that. Yes, wow. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now, what, what, um, what job were you? What MOS in it, for that's a mil military occupational specialty? What, what MOS were you? Uh, by trade, I was a thirty-five twenty-one motor transport maintenance mechanic, and then as as I progressed in my career, I became a thirty-five twenty-nine, which is a maintenance chief. So I was in charge of the maintenance and oversaw everything that was going on in the motor pool. Hmm. And what does it mean? 3529, baby. <laughs> hey, right. you, you can't ride without the pride, motor T. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> Hoorah. Hoorah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you felt good saying that. Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so where, where were you stationed? Your different stations that you were at? Uh, I was, I was uh, mostly, I mean, I was really only in three different areas. Okay. My first duty station was Camp Kinzer, Okinawa, Japan. And then I left there. I went to Camp Pendleton right here in California. I left Pendleton to go on old recruiting duty. For three years, I left recruiting, went back to Pendleton, but I kind of veered away from the regular Marine Corps, and I got attached to the Special Operations Unit, MARSOC. Mm. Talk, talk a little bit about that for those that are not, um, you know, savvy or up to speed as to, you know, what the Special Force looks like. Yeah, yeah. Well, MARSOC is the Marine Corps version of the Special Operations Command. So, like, the Army has the Rangers, the Navy has the SEALs. Oh. The Marine Corps has the MARSOC, and they're and they're operators. Got you. Okay, I I never knew that. I, I never knew oh, that. Oh, you didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And and then they form SOCOM, which is the spe overall all the branches that come together to make. SOCOM and they're the special forces. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. Yes. The actual branch SOCOM is made up of all the branches of special operation forces. Got you. So you have the SEALs, the Rangers, the. Yeah. The Army's got like the Rangers, the Green Berets, 
and then the Navy's got the SEALs, and then the Air Force have their PJs and their and their combat controllers. Yeah. Wow. Wow. My, I didn't. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. And then if you ever hear, um, recon doesn't fall in there, but they still utilize recon, correct? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. So recon so, is not a definite special force, but they they do attach to them to do some work. Hmm. A, lot, a lot of the, a lot of the recon guys in the Marine Corps that go force recon, they actually were the the beginning makings of the Mustang program. Hmm. And then that's that's all the old guys. Now, what did you? What made you? Uh, well, you, you said you had your, your family members had some experience in the military and the army and, you know, the recruiter really got you in on the, the Marine side. But when you got in, what were your expectations, you know, going into the, the Marines, going into the service um, boot camp, you know, when you first walked in there, you know, what, you know, what was it like to get there, go through it, graduate and then, you know, get, go to your, do your first uh, assignment? Mm -hmm. The very first impression, I was honestly, I was shell shocked when I first got to Paris Island. <laughs> but luckily, luckily, I had a little idea of what to expect, but not fully. Mm. So when I got there, I was like, all right, let's keep it open mind and let's see what happens. Mm. But I was that, I was, you know, I, I strapped up my boots and I was that good little recruit that you did what he's told yelled when he was supposed to yell and went on from there ended up graduating as a squad leader and went on to my break for a career love it love it man no that's good man so so you said you when you went to as you're getting into your marine corps career you know you talked about the different areas that you were in um went to cat went to okinawa cali pendleton and then back to went to recruiting duty when you went back to join the special forces, now what made you say, "Hey, you know, I, I want to go special forces and and, and go down that lane"? Um, th that part I didn't have an actual say in, but when I was mm -hmm. leaving, when I was leaving recruiting, I, I had orders from the monitor to go back to maintenance battalion. So I called them up and I was like, "Hey, Master Guns." I was, I came from maintenance battalion. I can't go back there. If I, if I want to progress in my career, I need to do a different area of maintenance. I'm just a different echelon. Mm. So echelon, you know, different levels of maintenance. Yeah. And maintenance battalion where I was going was, was considered a third echelon. And that's where I did most of my career in the beginning years like MTM in Okinawa and MTM in Camp Pendleton. Mm. Gotcha. When I, when I told him that I wanted to expand my, expand my knowledge, he's like, all right, good to go. We'll put you in a second shot. And then he sent me to Marsa. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it gave you the full-blown experience. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, Rick, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm no, no, go. no. Good. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I want to tell people if you're listening to this right now, or you're watching, you know, a lot of people like to use the the term loosely. I'm a miracle walking. Um, and right now we're taught the person that we're interviewing is actually a miracle walking, because or moving or whatever it is, he is a miracle to be alive because. Um, you know, when we think about um, our guys in the Marine Corps, we only think that things can happen overseas in the, in the fight. But sometimes the training area is dangerous also, all right? And, um, and, and, and Stu, they, they told him he wasn't going to live. That, well, not him. They told his wife, pull the plug. Yeah. He's done. He's done. He's brain dead. There's no way he's going to live. And mm. his wife believed in the fight that was in him and he's here. So we want to jump into that story because I remember the day I was at maintenance battalion and I saw Boychuk and Boychuk is a, uh, is a mutual friend between both of us. I didn't know directly know Stu, but Boychuk and I, uh, Boychuk is a link between both of us. And I heard, and Boychuk came back and said, yo, uh, 
uh, the the, the uh, uh, stool over there at, at, at um, in the Flores area just had an accident and it's real bad. I, I don't know if you remember that or if you have a problem talking about it, but if you don't have a problem talking about it, let's can you just walk us through what happened that day? Quite honestly, I don't really know. I just know what, what went off the report. What was on the report? I remember was I was riding, I was I was instructing a uh, off-road licensing coach for the unit, and because I ended up becoming, even though I was a, a maintenance chief, I ended up becoming a, uh, um, and I guess you could say honorary motor transport operations chief. So I got to learn the operations side of the house as far as driving all the different vehicles and understanding their capacities of what they can tow and how to tow and how to actually drive the different vehicle platforms. So I was instructing, I became an instructor and then I was actually teaching a class on the MV850, which is made by Polaris and it's up armored. So there's an armored vehicle and it's just an, it's an ATV with armor. It's a pretty sweet little machine. And I was taking that out there, teaching the guys how to operate it through the trails and through soft sand and different types of uneven terrain. And as we were going through the trail portion, that's when my, my vehicle ended up, we don't really know what happened. It just kind of took a bad hop off a, a random rock. And from one report, it said that my foot got caught when I was trying to bail. And as it did, it kind of kept my foot on the vehicle as I jumped and then it continued to bounce. And then it came back and rolled right on top of my head. Mm. Oh, my face, should I say. Mm. And it tore it completely tore my face off from my jaw jawline over the bridge of my nose, and it uh, detached my left eye from the optic nerve. And then, mm. so and I'm completely blind in my left eye. Wow. And from all the injuries, I severed and occluded my right carotid artery. So the the occlusion or the clot ended up saving my life, but it also affected my, uh, my brain. So the clot that stopped the bleeding ended up shooting up into my brain. And then it caused a right hemisphere brain stroke, which rendered the left side of my body completely paralyzed. And, and it gave me swallowing and speech problems. Mm. And I work, and I'm, I had to work for a good couple of years with a speech uh, pathologist just on how to swallow and eat because th she told me that I would leave the hospital on a feeding tube, and I told her child was accepted. I love it, Marie. <laughs> oh man, um, so. And how long were you in the were you in the hospital? Because I know you're in the hospital for a while. Oh golly, I was there for I was six months in the I'm bouncing between the ICU and other sections of the hospital at Scripps. And then after those six months, they uh, evac'd me up to Palo Alto and I was up there for two years for inpatient rehab, learning how to walk, talk, and eat again. Wow. Wow, wow. So, man, I mean, like Marlon said, you're a miracle, you know, walking here. Um, and, you know, by the reason why I really specifically asked about your background and where you're from and, you know, where you are, you know, what get your journey into the Marines, because, you know, even though when you're signing up, you're signing up to say, hey, you know, I'm going to serve this country and I'm going to put my life on the line and I'm going to fight. Um, and but at the same time, you know, when you're going through, you know, the routine uh, training, 
you know, I, I, I know, I know it's not, you know, safe proof in terms of, you know, you, you want to train in, in the situation so you can be ready. Um, but at the same time, that's the, kind of the last place where you're thinking that, you know, something this severe would happen to you. And, and you know, I, I can imagine, you know, as you're, you know, even though you're listening to the nurse saying, hey, you know, I, I accept that challenge, you know, as you're sitting there, have you, did you ever reflect back as to, man, how, how in the world did, did this happen? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I lay there in my bed wondering what could have, what I could have done differently. And honestly, I have no idea because I, I did all my pre checks before I left the, for the trail ride. And I did everything that I was supposed to do while riding. And it was just a freak accident. And when everything happened and I woke up in the hospital and my wife explained to me what was going on. And then the realization, everything kind of sank in and I was like, oh man. Mm. Yeah. What, what made your wife, and I, I understand that love did it. Um, when you have a doctor who's a professional saying to your wife, pull the plug, he's done. Did she ever, did you ever ask her what made you want to keep the plug in and keep fighting? Oh, no, I never had to ask her. She always just told me. She goes, nope, he, I ain't losing him. I'm, she told me, the way my wife put it, she's like, I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to keep him around. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. Oh, man. And for that <laughs> selfish reason, you're still around. That's a great thing. Now, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people, they go through, and I don't want to minimize anybody else's struggle that they go through. But when you look at a, um, somebody that was um, is facing what you're facing, when you're, when you're laying down in that bed and you're going through that two, two and a half year rehab, what kind of mindset did you have to have in order? And this is a question that's probably redundant, but it, it's what, what kind of mindset did you have to have in order to make it through? Honestly, I just, I just continued to use like the basics that I learned in the Marine Corps to maintain a... Uh, a PMA, a positive mental attitude, is just remind, reminding myself all the good things of why I was still here and what I what I had to look forward to. My biggest thing to learn how to walk again was to eventually be able to walk both of my daughters down the aisle when they got married and they were older. Mm. I I refused to just sit by and watch it happen and let someone else take them down. Wow. Wow. Mm. So with the, um, and you have two daughters, correct? I do. Yes. Yep. Two daughters and, and a wife. And I saw the dog in the background, a big, was a German shepherd. Yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> 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 so what, what goals do you have set for yourself now? What goals, what do you say? Hey, what am I going to, and I know walking your daughters down the aisle is, one of the goals, but what other goals do you have? Uh, as of recently, because I got into all the adaptive sports programs, I got big into archery and like field events, like shot put and discus. And I also do one-handed shooting with the air rifle and then pistol. And I want, my goal is to get into the Paralympics for archery. Hmm. Love it, yes, sir. That's I I I, I wanted I, I I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to give you the answer, but I love that you that you came with that answer because a lot of people. I'm telling you, some people they get into a situation and what they do is they just say they woe is me. And I like the fact that once you once you were in the situation, you didn't look at the negative, you look at the positive and said, let me get back to where I need to be. And now you're doing. You're golfing with one hand, I heard? Oh, yeah. Golfing, one-handed. Or I'm swinging one-handed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah swinging one-handed. Um, you, like you said, you're shooting, you're doing archery and all these different stuff. And you actually travel around doing this stuff right now, correct? Yes. I, I still practice out here in California. And I before COVID struck and shut everything down, I used to go out to Tampa, Florida, 
to the SOCOM headquarters because I'm on Team SOCOM for the Warrior Games. Okay. Which, if you don't know, the Wounded Warrior Games is the, the Department of Defense's version of the Paralympics. Mm. And wow. it's in the, the Wounded Warrior Games is a competition between all the branches that are wounded, ill, or injured. And they all compete in different, I think it's like 13 different sports in total. And it goes, comes down from everything from archery to rifle shooting, standing. It's your rifle shooting, two different classes, but standing and prone. And there's a pistol shoot and there's track and field. So just like anything you'd see with the Paralympics, the Department of Defense Winter War Games does this, pretty much the same thing. It's a lot of fun. I can comp- I competed back in 2019, and uh, I when I competed back in 2019, we had the games right there in Tampa, Florida, and they had a huge like opening event and ceremony, and we had all the different branches and the teams that were there. It was a phenomenal time. It made a lot of good friends from all the different branches. The games were held in downtown Tampa that year. So they used uh, the, what is it, the Amelia Arena for the opening ceremony. And the local college they had there, they used for the track and field events. So they, we actually got to utilize different venues. And I forget what the name of the, the center was that hosted the archery competition, the shooting, the rugby, and the seat of volleyball. But there was like a little sports car complex they had right there in Tampa where they hosted all of like the smaller events. Nice. Uh, love it. So man, it's, man, I mean, what I love is that, you know, you're – finding opportunities to even strive and even, you know, um, just get out there and compete, you know, go out there and defy, you know, the, the, uh, I'm trying to get the, the, the right words here, but defy what the, the status of what people would say about you, you know, like, oh man, you know, give up, you know, there's nothing else in life, just relax, you know, just, you know, but you're like, no, man, I still, want, I still want to compete. I still want to fight. I still want to learn things. I still want to do, be my best self. And that's hard for a lot of people that, that haven't gone through your experience to be their best self, right? They're still right. sitting there trying to figure out and say, oh, well, one day I'm going to get in shape. One day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to experience this. And, you know, you, where you have every excuse to say, you know what, I don't want to do anything else. You're still saying, hey, you know what, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to give it all I got, man. And, you know, I am just, just super, you know, just, just, just proud of what you've done and just uh, thank you for your service um, uh, to, to the country. And I, man, I just wish so many blessings upon you and your family um, as in the coming years. Thank you. So what are you going to be doing for the Marine Corps birthday? I know you're celebrating it big. What are you doing for the Marine Corps birthday, man? Uh, we're going to have a nice home cooked meal here. I'm not gonna lie, might crack open a cold one and share that with the wife. But other than that, I can't. I'm not gonna really do anything huge because I mean I know I'm here on Pendleton, but it's, I don't know. It's just I like to do things a little low key. For 15 years, I did a lot of celebrating with the from my brothers and sisters, and I think this year I'm just gonna keep it low key with my with my actual family, not just my Marine family. And because because they've all been a part of my career their whole lives, my kids anyway. Yeah. And they're just as much a part of the core because they, they grew up with it. So I gotta give them a little credit and mm. celebrate them. Uh, I love it. Definitely, 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 man. Boychuk, um Boychuk said definitely when this come out, he's gonna Boychuk is one of your biggest fans, man. Yeah, he, he's a great guy. I love that dude. He's a He's a good man. Good guy. So he's another one that had Ricky uh, Borchuk. He had a brain um, surgery, mm-hmm. and then they wanted to, hey, they were going to med step him out the Marine Corps. And in 60 days, he was doing some physical 
all the physical training again. And they're like, uh, yeah, we'll keep you. <laughs> 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 yeah, so um, those, are the, those are the guys that I'm around. And those are the guys that when somebody see me in this and, 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 they're, and they're asking you, me, man, why do you love the Marine Corps so much? Is the, is the brotherhood that's within the Marine Corps and the brotherhood that you know that you can count on any and anyone. And when you meet someone for the first time, it's not like, it's not like you have to try to catch up or try to make something gel. You just gel because of just simply being a Marine. And um, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's something I love about the, uh, the Marine Corps. Um, so I know you live there in Boychuk's old house. Are you, are you planning, what, what's gonna be the living situation um, going further on? Uh, honestly, we, I was actually so uh, grateful enough to be selected by the Gary Sinise Foundation and they are building me an adapted smart home to meet oh, all wow. my needs for my wheelchair and my one-handed abilities. So that's being built currently right now in Vista, California. Wow. Love it, man. Congratulations, I, man. I was very blessed by them. Yeah. Congratulations, man. That's going to be good. Uh, uh, thank you. I did, I did a couple things with them. I was um, a recruiter in Tampa, actually. Um, I'm no kidding. Yeah, I, I recruited right out of Tampa on um, Port Ritchie and, and New Tampa, Wesley Chapel. And then I went up to Kissimmee, which is near to, near, closer to Orlando. It, so do you know Pedro Aguilar? Yeah, I know Aguilar. Aguilar is my boy, man. man he, he, was, uh, he was my instructor at recruiting school. Oh, yeah. So Batista was my instructor. He was um he was the other instructor, but most naturally because of his personality and you know he's very you know the people's person. Um, we became yeah, he, friends. Yeah, yeah, he was a yeah, he's a good guy too. Yeah, in Tampa also in the Orlando or area right there doing real estate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know him very well. But um, I I I got a chance to for the Habitats for Humanity and stuff like that go through with them when they build a house for someone, a smart house. They had a guy that he got injured in Iraq and they, they um, we actually went to the house and did some stuff and um, helped them out. Um, those guys really do a good thing. I want to shout out all those people that are taking the opportunity to say, I don't want to be selfish. What I, I could take my money and put it in the bank or invest it in myself, but what they're actually doing, they're looking out for guys like yourself to say, hey, this guy right here was fighting for the country and something happened to him. Let's give him the opportunity to, you know, live a, live a, better, a, a better life if we can. So I want to shout out to those guys for just um, giving out that helping hand and helping out uh, guys like yourself and others that are going through what they're going through. Definitely. Without them and everybody else that helped donate is incredible. Without all of them, it wouldn't be possible. Correct. Not right. just for me, but for everybody that the foundation has helped. Correct. Which is incredible. Correct. So, I was at, um, um, being home chasing around the, the two girls. I see them back there with the dog and they're moving back and forth. They keep you, <laughs> they keep you busy and young, huh? Oh, yeah. All day. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. Love yeah, it, man. I, I, I just can't wait, man. I can just, man, you painted the picture so clear and said, man, your, your why, what you were fighting for, to, to get back up and walk again, just to walk them down the aisle is, um, man, it's a beautiful thing, man. And, you know, just seeing them and just seeing where you are now is just like, yeah, I, I, I hope they see, you know, the, the, the resilience that you have in, your, in yourself and it carries over to their life. Um, because, you know, it's something that is missing in the world today uh, around a lot of people uh, where you know, it's so easy to quit. It's so, so easy to get caught up in your current circumstance and say, oh, man, you know, woe is me. And, and, and or always try to compare yourself to other people that are out there in the world and, and, and make it seem like you're not as well off or whatever it may be. Um, but man, I, I just love the fact that, you know, you internalized your why you push past um, difficulties that seemed impossible for, you know, the do even the doctors, you know, um, and you took on challenges that some people would have just completely just given up. And man, just, 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 man, I, I'm just, I'm just here, man. I was getting chills earlier like that and listening to the story, 
seeing you here and just knowing what you went through, but also just your mindset of just being determined to, you know, live the best life you have, you know, uh, and just giving it all you got. So, man, love it, man. Really appreciate you coming on, talking with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm being too, digging too deep, or I don't want to, you know, scratch any wounds or anything like that. You said you want to walk your daughters down the aisle, and I know you have a wheelchair. How close are you, or how hard are you working on the walking part? Are they thinking that you're going to walk again? Um, what, what, what are you doing to, 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 to get there? I recently just got signed up again with the VA. They, they sent me to a physical therapy clinic out here in California to get back into more physical therapy. But right before COVID hit, or actually right as COVID hit, Man, I was doing a, a PT quite a bit to get back into walking and build strength in my legs so I could walk again and work on my balance. So, I mean, I got to get back into relearning how to keep my balance over both feet as I'm shifting back and forth while walking. Okay. So it's not so much the walking is just the keeping the balance. Yeah. Well, it's uh, keeping your balance, make sure like your gait is is centered so your body can stay upright. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure how good your balance is, but when when you have a leg that that doesn't like to work properly, I I gotta I gotta fight with it to keep it straight because if I don't, my my foot likes to turn outward as I walk and that can throw me off or I can trip over it. So I got to think about a lot more than the average person when it comes to walking. Mm. So hopefully when I get into this new program that the VA set up, I'll be able to regain a lot back what I've lost from not being able to go due to COVID. Okay. 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 Yeah, that COVID thing was really, is really you know, shut a lot of stuff down. But yeah, if, if 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 I was a betting man, and they asked me if I was gonna bet um, against you walking or you walking, I'd I'm I'm gonna put my money on you walking. So I, I I'm sure with your mindset and what you um what you've been through already, that walking is gonna be one of those things that you'll definitely be able to do. Um, taking your daughters down the aisle, man. Um, so I appreciate that. If somebody wants to reach out to you or they want to talk to you about anything or somebody's going through something, service member, non-service member, and they just need to talk to somebody or they need to hear from somebody that's, that's been through, you know, something that, that, that's so catastrophic, how could they reach out to you? Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Okay. And they just type in your name and, that, and it will just pop right up, right? Okay. All right. So you hear that people, if you, if you want to reach out, um, you know, show some love to Stu, um, follow his, his path. I'm sure you're putting your, your warrior games on there. I don't know if you post it up on there. Okay. So if you, if, if you want all all posted up, yep. If you want to follow his, uh, his career, his athletic career, right. Him go, trying to get into the uh, Olympics, definitely check him out on, um, on Facebook. We'll put it on the, on the notes. And then we'll definitely have you guys uh, follow his career. Um, Stu, once again, I want to tell you, thank you for um, coming on. I don't know if Ricky, if you, 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 I know you always have that last question. Um, if you could go back. Um, I'll let yeah. you do that. Yeah, Stu, man, this is a perfect, um, man, it's a perfect scenario um, in order to break, pose this question. What we typically ask our guests, um, at the end of a show is, you know, this is all about the journey, right? Um, this is, this, we call it, we phrase it the success journey, but it's really just a life journey. Um, and if you can go back to that 17 year old that's enlisting into the Marines, that's in the hallway talking to that recruiter, um, and you can just pull them aside for, you know, one minute, you know, after you talk to that recruiter, you know, what would you say to him? I tell him, I'd be like, go for it. Mm -hmm. Just do, do whatever you can. Get your 
hands dirty, get out there and do whatever you feel is right and what makes you happy. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. There we go, travelers. There we go. Uh, we have St uh, Stuart uh, DePaulo, DePaulio, right? DePaulio. Uh, did I it's pronounce that right? DePaulo. Say that one more time. It's DePaulo. 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 Yes, yeah, Stuart uh, DePaulo. And then Marlon's framed it so well. And I hope you're able to even not just listen, but see us here on this podcast and just man, see Stu just striving, you know, and just, just living a, a great life even after something that, man, out of his control. Um, as he's mentioned, you know, look back, what would he have done differently uh, in that event? And he's like, there's nothing I could have done. I did everything the way I should have done it. And still the circumstances was what it is. And, um, man, we just hope that you that are listening right now, that you could look at your circumstance in the same way, hey, this is the life, this is your life that you have been given and you are where you are right now, not just based off because of the circumstance, but also because of the way that you approach it. So don't worry about the circumstance and what life has dealt you. Worry about what you're going to do with that, that dealing and how you're going to play the hand. So we want to encourage you to continue to check in to the Success Journey Show as we listen to stories, uh, the behind the scenes stories of individuals' journeys in life as they are trying to be better men, better women, better people of, of the community and better people of the world. So I want to thank you again for tuning in. Go to our podcast, uh, any podcast platform, or go to our website at the, the thesuccessjourneyshow.com. I, I don't know if anyone's been on there lately, man, but we got a new, new facelift. I know we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, a new facelift, uh, face, facelift on the website. Go ahead, check it out. Let us know how you like it. Um, but, man, we're here for you. Leave a review, leave a comment, reach out to us. Um, and thank you for checking in again for another week of the Success Journey Show. Everyone, uh, have a good one. And to all the Marines, have a good day. You've been listening to the Success Journey Show, where your dreams, drive, determination, and diligence are the foundation to success. For more information, check out thesuccessjourneyshow.com. The Journey Squad is here helping you to your destination.